Hey everyone, my name is Melanie. Welcome to Furniture Recreated. This week's project is a credenza. My customer purchased this on Marketplace and he brought it right here from the place he purchased it. It was wrapped in saran wrap when he dropped it off and this morning I unwrapped it. I wasn't pleased with what I found underneath the saran wrap. The top is really a mess. There is hardware missing on this side. There's supposed to be a magnet on both spots to hold the doors in place. The legs are so rough. They didn't finish sanding them. They're not smooth at all. The drawers, nothing has been protected with any kind of top coat no neutral colored stain nothing to protect this wood it disappoints me to see that someone sold this on marketplace in the condition that it's in at any rate i am here to fix it refinish it and make it look new again stick around <music> When you line a drawer, you want it to be one solid piece all the way across. You don't want to scrap it together like a collage. I'm sanding this paint off because it hasn't even cured yet. This top was a mess. I'm assuming that the person that was refinishing this wanted to get rid of the sharp corners on these drawers. The problem was they used a sander and didn't bother to sculpt it with a hand sander. And that's really what needed to be done. So that's what I'm doing here. These poor drawers were so thirsty, so I put some natural colored stain, which doesn't have any pigment, on all three drawers to make them look new again. I also sanded the inside of the drawers to make them look new again as well. From far away, these legs may have looked like they had been refinished, but up close, they weren't refinished at all. And as I had said before, they were so rough, so I just pretended like they hadn't been sanded at all. All right, it's Tuesday morning. I just wanted to give you a quick update on everything that I experienced yesterday with this piece. Um, when I started yesterday, I had told you that when I unwrapped the piece, it um, had some significant spots that didn't look good at all. The top, it didn't look finished. There was wood filler that hadn't been sanded down. On the legs, they weren't finished at all. I mean, it, they had been sanded maybe with the 80 grit or 60 grit. It was really rough and not even completely sanded. So I finished that. I repaired the legs because on each side there were big gaps. So I, I, glued them back together. I glued them onto the top because there was nothing holding those legs together from where the legs were. It's kind of hard to explain. They were actually placed on a base and they weren't attached to the bottom of the piece except for the base. It's kind of odd. So anyway, I actually did glue them because they were very loose and coming apart. There is a hole in the back of the piece, on the back, that it looks like somebody punched through it. And you can actually see that it's been punched through when you open the cabinet door. I was stunned to see that. They painted over it. I was able to sand the doors. Um, today I'm going to finish sanding and start the process of either mixing paint or using a paint color that I already have. Now this customer wants a custom color that looks like his logo. And my only concern with that, and I've already shared this with him, is that it's very bright. And I know that that's not what he wants. So we talked through that. We're gonna make a final decision today about the color. So I will probably be painting today, I hope, unless something goes wrong. And um, yeah, let's get on with it. 
I suggested Chesler to my customer because it was actually just a few shades darker than the color that he originally chose but it has a more sophisticated look to it and would give the furniture that style that I think he was looking for for his office. Well, I was grateful that the paint hadn't cured yet, but this top was a huge challenge. I originally thought, okay, I'm gonna sand down all this wood filler, smooth it out. To the touch, it was smooth, but once I put paint over it, you could still see all of those imperfections in that wood. So you see me applying some bin primer. I tinted it a little bit just hoping that that would fill in some of those areas that were really causing me trouble. But after all of that attention, I think the customer will be pleased with the results. I had never come across something like this before. I've seen it on the backs of pieces, but I'd never seen it punch through to the other side. So I wasn't really sure how I was going to deal with this. So I put my hands on it, kind of felt where things were going and how far it stuck out and how far I could put it back in. And then I decided to sand off all of those edges. Now this is like, layers and layers of cardboard squished together. Um, it has the same texture, really, the same material, but yeah, it, I wasn't sure how this was gonna go. After sanding it, I decided the best way to deal with this was to glue it down, because all of that was kind of sticking out and I could only sand it so much before it was all gonna come apart. So I did that and then I added wood filler to fill in the gaps. Unfortunately, I didn't film that. Soapstone turned out to be almost a perfect match for the second color in my customer's logo, which saved me a bit of time. When you have a drawer that has never had hardware on it, it can be a bit of a challenge getting the holes all in the right place on each of the drawers. Now, I had forgotten that this piece of hardware is considered a drop pole. And when there's a drop pole, you don't necessarily center it from top to bottom because the bottom drops below the center. So you have to measure it farther to the top. So unfortunately, the first drawer, I have a couple extra holes, but thankfully the drop holes cover them and you will never see them. Each piece of furniture offers up its own set of challenges and this piece was not an exception. In fact, there were way more challenges than usual, but this one was an easy fix. And if I couldn't have fixed it, then I would have come up with another solution because that's what refinishing furniture is all about, coming up with solutions to each of the problems that you come across. Now this kind of hardware is a little bit more difficult to make the holes and make sure that they are in the right place. That's why I'm holding it the way I am, just to make sure it matches up. I wanted to find any way I could to make these legs sturdier than they were. They were so jiggly because they were put on a frame, but the frame 
is only connected to the piece of furniture by a couple of screws. So that was a little bizarre. And I thought whatever I could do to make it a little sturdier, that's what I was gonna do. Now these joints were very separated when I first got this piece and I used sawdust from this piece and glue to fill in those gaps and make it less obvious. I also glued them together and tried to make it as tight as I could, but I don't have a clamp that's long enough to go from one leg to the other. I'm using warm ultra flat polyurethane top coat on this whole piece, not the painted areas because that has top coat in it, but I put two coats on the doors because I think that was enough for a piece of office furniture and they turned out super smooth. I'm always really happy with that because it just works so well when you use those finishing pads. I am first putting that natural colored stain on the legs before I apply the warm ultra flat polyurethane top coat to the legs as well. And here I am putting that top coat on and I'm putting two coats on the legs as well. Now, if you haven't used finishing pads in the past, be sure whenever you're putting paint on or top coat that you use those finishing pads between each coat of paint or top coat your results will be phenomenal. It really is a game changer. You can find a link for the finishing pads in the description box below the video. Full disclosure, I am an affiliate for amazon.com. I was so happy with those drawers once I put that top coat on and it made that wood grain pop. It just made such a huge difference. Now, just a note, I also put top coat on the sides of the drawer and on this one, I put it on the edges, the top of the edges of the drawer because I don't want anything getting caught on any pieces of fabric. I just want it a smooth ride when you pull that drawer in and out. Here's a quick look at that repair with the wood filler on and this is what it looked like after I painted it. Not bad. Now, if you look closely, you can see it, but this is in the back of the cabinet and there will be a shelf with things on it in front of it. So I'm not worried in the least. If you wanna impress your customer, Big Mama's Butter on the drawers, they just make them shine. The difference is amazing. Every time I do it, it just brings that wood back to life. And it smells pretty good too. It was so satisfying to use these finishing pads on these legs and make them smooth because when I first touched them, when I first got this piece, they were so rough. So it was nice to make them smooth and just looking like new. Well, I feel like I haven't said this in a while. It is finally time to put on that hardware and finish up this piece. I sped this up a little because it's painful to watch. That stupid dolly was rolling all over the place. <laughs> One final sanding with finishing pads and a microfiber cloth to make that top shine and nice and smooth. This project was more mentally tough than it was physically tough. There were a lot of things to fix, but I kept thinking about the person that refinished this before me. Were they just inexperienced? But really, I felt worse for my customer who spent $400 on a piece that wasn't finished at all. And I hope that when you're refinishing a piece of furniture, you really take the time and do it right 
And then when you sell a piece to a customer, you can feel good about it. Thanks for being here. See you next time. You can do it. <laughs>